Hi, I'm Johnny Jenkins and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's great to see you. Now, over the past 10 weeks in the series, Speaking to Students, we've been meeting a load of remarkable students who do extra things alongside their degree. And if you've missed those, then do catch up on my channel. But for today, we've got a bonus episode. Now, you may remember James Briggs from earlier in the series on Speaking to Students. So James has come back and we're turning the tables today. He's going to be talking to me all about my student experience. So. James, over to you. Thank you very much. I mean, I feel very, uh, very honoured for you to have asked me back. So thank you very much. Um, I mean, I've had a little bit of a think about what I could ask you. So I thought, why not start uh, sort of at the beginning in a way? And, you know, what uh, what was your sort of uh, earliest memory, really, of wanting to be a presenter and go into that sort of area? So I edited the um, newspaper at school. My friends set it up when we were in year seven. So literally like 11 years old. Um, and then after a while it sort of dwindled down after a, a term or so and then I picked it back up again and edited it for like four five years and I didn't really see it as journalism at the time I was just um just sort of doing something fun with my mates uh, but I sort of think when I first sort of got the bug of like presenting journalism especially like news and politics I was watching the 2015 general election and I think it was a debate, you know, they do these sort of like hustings and debates beforehand. And I was watching one of them and that was fine. And then afterwards they went to the spin room, which if you don't know, it is when you get um, like all the politicians um, and aides and journalists, they all sort of gather there and they all try and spin the story to say, we won the debate. No, we won the debate. And I think it was then when I sort of first saw it all in action. And I remember thinking that is what I want to do. Yeah, I totally get that. I think you know, mine was very similar. I think my earliest memory was giving my grandparents weather forecasts on the back of their car. But exactly, you know, doing the little things like that is a really good intro, I think, to it. Um, I'm guessing, you know, hearing about the sort of spin room and things, that was some sort of uh, intro as well to your your degree, I'm guessing, because you're doing politics, aren't you? Uh, was that sort of what led into it as well? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I've always sort of been interested in the world around me, but I don't remember the time where I decided I'm going to study politics. I did it at A-level and um, I knew I wanted to do it at A-level, so I must have sort of realised um, when I was about 15, maybe a bit earlier on, that, that that's when I wanted to, to study politics. And I suppose it was around the same time as that that general election in 2015 and then I started um, I literally I started work experience in radio during the election campaign so my first thing I ever did was go out onto the high street with a microphone and ask people what they thought of um, who were the leaders at the time David Cameron and uh, Ed Miliband and I was sort of asking them what, what, what everyone thinks about them so and then I started interviewing people for the school newspaper like politicians so I suppose it all happens around that time uh, when I was sort of about 14. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think that's perhaps the sort of area you would like to focus on going, you know, after your degree in things is politics? Yeah, I think so. Um, I, I say to people, my dream job is to be BBC political editor. And I suppose that's a dream job for so many people. Uh, but I, I really, one day, you know, if I ever get there or get anywhere near there, I'm just going to be um, so happy. I think... Um, news and politics obviously you know, they're very intertwined that's what i'm interested in and, and, and that's what the field that i hope to work in so we could possibly be speaking now to the next andrew marr maybe i mean uh, I'm, I'm not going to say no <laughs> <laughs> it's the best attitude to have i like it um how important then do you think or how much opportunity have you had to sort of uh, merge your degree you know politics and things with you know presenting and the various radio opportunities and tv you've had as well i think i um first realized how connected it all was when i was doing my a levels so i was uh, about 16 or 17 and i was doing uh, i still do a sunday morning breakfast show on air and um you know we'd have sort of talk politics and, and talk about other things as well and i would go in a day i used to study politics economics and english um, and geography actually and sometimes you go between all four subjects in a day and you'd be talking about very similar things about what's happening in the world at the time it was probably brexit and things like that and then you would go home or at the weekend you'd go to the studio and you'd be talking about the same things and this happens time and time again um with my degree now uh, that for example I, I do a module all about climate change and a, a few weeks ago i was um learning all about climate change in the day and net zero carbon, which is a target that, that many governments have got. And then later that evening, I was on BBC Five Live. And what was the top story? Well, it was all about climate change and the government's commitments. So it's all very much linked in. Yeah, I, I get that totally. And I think especially 
the last few years, isn't it, with things like Brexit and what we've been seeing in America and you know the capital riots. It's a massive uh, area at the moment, isn't it? It's and something I think that's only going to be um, increasing for the next few years. Um, but do you think there's anything um, or moment in particular that you've uh, worked on or reported on, like you sort of touched on then, where you thought, you know, this is uh, pretty special to be in the position I'm in, being able to speak about these sort of political things? I think just generally over the past few years, like you say, we had, we've had so many elections and votes and Brexit. I mean, what a time to start studying and working in politics and media with Brexit and everything that followed that. And of course now with coronavirus, which has completely dwarfed any of that. Um, I think with Brexit, it, it was quite a sort of privilege to be on air before and after the big late night votes in Parliament and doing special shows all about that and live updates. You, um, you certainly had a responsibility to communicate what was going on because it was and, and still is all very complex. And with Corona, I mean, it is such um, it, it is such a privilege, but also you know such a responsibility to be on air every evening, which I am and I have been for almost a year now. Every evening with the latest news, you're talking every night at the moment about hundreds. Uh, over a thousand people dying in a day you're talking to people um, who have an empty seat at the dinner table that night and you've got to communicate the news but but do it tactfully and tastefully and, uh, and make sure you get it all across it is such a responsibility and I'm very aware of that every time I, uh, I turn on my microphone at half five every evening I'm very aware that it's a big job and you're informing people mm-hmm. yes it's very true I think um, and sort of along that sort of line, really, I mean, what would you say has been your sort of favourite medium? Do you think sort of TV or, or radio? I've had a lot more experience in radio and it, it is brilliant. It's got this ability to communicate with somebody at the other end and, and, and radio is a real, real friend for people. And I think that's something we've realised so much more um, since the pandemic hit and there's been a real uptick in loneliness and isolation. So... Radio is very, very special to me. Um, TV is obviously quite exciting. It, it, it's, um, you know, there's a few more sort of lights and, and, and jazziness there. Um, I, I suppose I would sort of pick radio just because I've had more experience in it, but, but both are very special. Yeah, I, I get that totally as well. And I think as well, what's quite nice about doing radio, isn't it, is that um, sort of chance really to feel like you're in someone's house with them. You know, you almost invited in a way. And I think that's really quite special to have that ability to to talk directly with people as well yeah because i mean i i hardly ever hear myself through an actual radio because most of the stuff i do is live but occasionally if i've pre-recorded something um or something's going out later in the day and you switch on a physical actual radio and few, there's fewer and fewer of them around now but you switch on an actual radio and you hear your voice coming through it's um it's a bit weird and even now after so many years I find it incredibly uh, strange to hear myself coming through an actual radio switched on and just as easy as to switch it on it's very easy to switch it off so it's 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 a it's a quite a job where when you're on air to not lose listeners them not say you know I'm bored of this of this person I'm going to turn them off you've got to keep them there and, and I think that can be quite a task yeah yeah I get that 100% uh, I mean we sort of touched on it a, a little bit really but how have you found, um, you know, COVID has impacted, you know, um, part of your studies and as well doing the radio stuff as well? Well, we started a um, daily coronavirus update on air. It was two weeks before the national lockdown. We started doing it at six o'clock every night because the government started doing these briefings at five. And uh, I, I think that if you're a political uh, journalist and there's a briefing from the government, it, well, it's your job to cover it. Uh, and, and so we decided that very early on. And there was one moment that really sticks in my mind. I was at my uh, room at university. It was, um, it would have been March of uh, 2020. And I was watching a briefing by the Prime Minister and he came out and it was one of the very first ones. And he said, I'm gonna level with you, people are going to die. And at that point I was packing my suitcase to come home, not because of Corona, but because it was Easter holidays and I was uh, traveling back. And then I went on air uh, and spoke all about the briefing. And I think that sort of sums everything up because there was uncertainty over when I was gonna come back to university. And I ended up um, studying at home for six months instead of six weeks. Uh, uh, and then watching the briefing and having to go on air after that, you, you started to learn a lot of the skills of, of sort of acting off the back of these briefings. And a lot of it, you know, I still do now. It's taught me a lot coronavirus, but um, 
it's it's affected my life as it has everyone yeah that's very true and i think you know especially now as, as we're filming this we're you know a year on from covid sort of really um making itself known to us um how do you think uh covid has changed us you know as uh as a nation, um, maybe as a world type of thing, and and do you think it's going to have some benefits, you know, coming out of it? Much more aware of science and, and the role it plays. I've uh, learned a lot about science over the past year. The stuff I didn't really learn at school, um, and, and having to communicate that clearly can be a bit of a task, but it's something I've built up over time. Uh, but the one thing I love about um, the, the effects of all of this is studying uh, from home and working from home. Now, we've always done a lot of remote working um, at the radio station I work at Gateway, but it's really sort of come to the fore now. I was in the studio yesterday and there was no one there. It was literally just me and it was just peculiar to think I'm there um, on a weekday and there was no one there and it was just all very weird to me because normally there's loads of people in the studio all sort of bouncing off one another and helping each other. Um, so that's weird, but I do, I do quite like working from home, which I do most days. I like the way I can sit there studying, watching a lecture, and then I can, you know, watch something work related and then send some emails, then go back to an essay and bounce back and forth. That, that, that's um, something that, that I've been doing a lot since COVID and it's helped me manage my time better. So much so that I now uh, pretty much, other than my show on Sunday, have the weekend off and I never used to uh, have the time to be able to do that. I like it. Yeah, I think that's something we're all sort of taking away from it really, isn't it? Is that uh, better, you know, work-life balance, which is it's quite a good thing to come out of it. Uh, I mean, sort of going away a little bit, perhaps from COVID. What what's the one thing that you may have discovered, perhaps in lockdown, and you think, oh, this is quite fun. I'm I'm glad I've discovered that. Oh, um, well, I learned how to run. Actually, that was a very big thing for me because when the lockdown first hit and they said stay at home, and I thought, well, I'm not just going to stay at home. I'm going to stay at home and eat loads of chocolate, and that's what I did for quite a long time. And then because I used to go to the gym all the time and was sort of active and moving about and things, and I really stopped it in lockdown and was not leaving the house very much at all. Um, and then in the summer of 2020, sort of spring and summer, I decided to do the Couch to 5K scheme. There's an app, you can do it, and it's really good. Um, and I learned to run, and now I run most days, and I really enjoy it, and that's something I'm definitely taking away from this, the important to sort of get moving, keep fit, and uh, yeah, I'll be ever grateful to COVID for that one. Yeah, so sort of uh, uh, leading up now, I mean, what uh, what do you think now are your, your next big plans? What are your sort of ambitions once lockdown's lifted and things go back to some level of normality again uh what's what's on your site oh well i'm really longing for it and i can't wait to get my vaccine and everyone to get it and things to get a bit more normal um so i was due to have some work experience at a national broadcaster uh, last april and of course like everything that was cancelled or postponed so hopefully uh i've been in communication with them and hopefully i'll be able to go and do that uh post lockdown and then um I've got some interviews uh, later uh, this year uh, all about training courses in journalism to sort of get, you know, like the official certificate, it's called an NCTJ certificate, to say that I'm uh, actually a journalist. And then hopefully um, this time next year, once I've done that course, if I get onto one of them, I can go and work for a national broadcaster uh, working in news and politics, and I really can't wait. Mm -hmm. That sounds really cool. I mean, just to sort of um, uh, wrap up, really, then what... What do you think is your one message to people who want to do what you do, really? Because it's really cool, you know, to get to do these radio shows and um, and be very much, you know, involved with um, reporting on politics. What, what would you say to people? Oh, well, thanks. You know, I, I find it really exciting and I know a lot of people do. What I would say is make content and make it regularly. Whenever I'm asked this question, I always say, well, what content are you making? Are you doing a YouTube channel? Are you doing a podcast? Are you writing articles? Have you got a blog? Uh, are you perhaps doing the radio show? Because it's so easy now to make content and I really don't think there are any excuses. If you wanna get into the field, it's busy, we all know that. What can make you stand out? Well, making good content. So make it, make it regularly and tell us about it. Put it all over your social media. Utilize social media to do that because you know it's all well and good you having an amazing blog with brilliant writing on there, but if no one knows about it, uh, then you need to be sharing it better. So make content, make it regularly and tell us all about it. Very wise words, I think. Well, thank you so much, Johnny, for allowing me to uh, to interview i've really enjoyed it so i think i better hand it back to you now haven't i <laughs> thank you james it's great uh, to, to have you back on the series and if you miss me chatting to james earlier this year then do check that out on my youtube channel thanks for watching and be sure to like and subscribe